Yo guys, welcome to the video. This is Josh or Milky and today we're going to talk about my newest build that I've been playing over the past few days. Uh, Hateforge is an item that got introduced in Ultimatum League and it gave us an opportunity to really abuse Vile skills. In the past you've been able to get 100% soul gain prevention from flasks by using multiple soul rippers or soul catchers and you could spam Vile skills uh, indefinitely. This was abused with things like lightning strike and this league I wanted to give it a go I've never used it before, so I thought I'd try it out. And one of the Crucible mods actually gives you 40% reduced soul gain prevention duration for Vol Volcanic Fissure or Vol Molten Strike. So I wanted to give this a try, and the way that I saw people doing it was with elemental damage. You would get a big two-hander, you could get 80% on a two-hander, and you do a lot of damage, and you'd be able to spam the Vol Volcanic Fissure pretty much indefinitely. However, I wanted to be a bit tankier, and tanky builds are not my forte. So I want to start the video by saying thank you to Void, uh, void241 i will leave his youtube in the description he was a huge help with bringing this build together this is completely out of my wheelhouse i'm normally playing map blasters you saw like with the previous build this is something i'm not really that familiar with and he helped me massively with this build so full credit goes to void for this build so anyway let's talk about how the build functions essentially we wanted to get this mod on two of our items we went with the weapon and of course the shield this took me 176 shields unveiled to get this mod 176 it was a long time i had to go through quad tabs and quad tabs of red blade banners but eventually we got it and uh i was just about to give up and then we hit it and void i was actually the one that hit that he ran a few of them for me and he got it um so again big thank you so that immediately deals with 80 percent of our soul gain prevention and then the thing that takes it to the next level is soul catcher soul catcher gives you 10 percent reduced bringing us up to 90 and of course this scales with flask effect so with our roughly 60% flask effect, this is about 16%. This means we have a 96% reduced soul gain prevention. And you can see on the right of the screen when we have flasks up, it's 0.36 seconds, meaning that our attack time, as long as it is equal to or exceeds the soul gain prevention, means we will never have to wait around. Now, this does mean that you can't get crazy amounts of attack speed unless you were to go a different route, which we'll talk about later. But this is how I've decided to go. Now, you could get more flask effect. I do have a... Uh, strangle grasp here so the amount of time that my soul capture is inactive is a lot lower but it is still there it is every every 7.2 seconds we could get a bit more quality on this to increase it even more but every 7.2 seconds or so we have to wait a little bit this is of course unless we're killing mobs which when you're mapping you won't notice that this at all you'll always be getting enough charges to have this perma uh, ability to use vol volcanic fissure but against single target where you're not going to be generating those charges as easily uh, you will have a little bit of downtime so you can go with a strangle grasp or you could just go with a percent strength implicit. I've been trying both. This I actually made before we updated the POB. It has Whispers of Doom, it has Sovereignty, Natural Remedies. I don't actually need those things anymore. I've dropped the mark. I don't need the, the mana reservation. We actually get it with some different pathing on the tree. So we actually don't need the strangle grasp, but it's still very good. Uh, if, if you were to get something different, you could get Lethality or you could get the Chaos Penetration right up here. Look, Heart of Darkness. 27% increased care damage and some pen. Brilliant. But that's how we deal with the soul gain prevention. 96% and we do not want our attack speed to exceed the soul gain prevention. So our attack time right now is 0.41. We could get it a bit more just to be more in line with that 0.36 second soul gain prevention. As for how far I've taken the build, this is fine for now. Now let's talk next about Hateforge. How does it work? Well, Hateforge basically reduces the rage because of your skills. Instead of spending souls that you would have to generate by killing monsters, you can instead spend rage. So we need a way to generate that rage. And how exactly are we going to do that? Well, this ring right here afflicts you with temporal change as well as enemies around you. Of course, it's blasphemed. And then chains of emancipation means that when you lose temporal chains, you gain maximum rage. And you lose temporal change every time you reach at least 25 rage. So we need to be dipping below 25 rage every time we attack and then quickly getting back up to 25 meaning that we want our cost of the skill, the, the rage cost, to be 26, which you can see is right here. 26, this is done with reduced rage cost of skills on hate for. Just one's perfectly defined, but it doesn't have to be. You can get a global reduced cost of skills, which is why we have this wheel right here. Uh, you could get more of these points. You could even get tireless if you have a worse rolled hate forge. Um, but this is what happens. So we attack, and if you watch here, we go down to 24 rage, and then immediately back to 50. And this is done because we have rage regeneration granted by Chainbreaker. 
Chainbreaker means that mana recovery from re regeneration is not applied. You don't get any mana regen. However, you do regenerate one rage for every 25 mana regeneration per second. And then your skills cost additional rage. Now, this means you need to get a lot of mana reservation, which puts the build under a lot of pressure gear-wise. Typically, people would get a mana regeneration amulet. You'd get a big mana regeneration roll in your ring. And at the end of the day, after all that said and done, well, you've got no gear left. You've given up two rings. You've given up your belt. You've given up your gloves. You've given up your amulet. And then you're left with your big two-hander, your helmet, your boots, and obviously your chest. So, so you, you you essentially have four pieces of gear once you've done all the things to cover it. So I wanted to do it differently, and we actually went with cluster jewels. Strength stacking and attribute stacking in general takes advantage of 12 passive cluster jewels. Typically, you'll get something like this, which has increased effect, life, strength, and then, of course, we needed that mana regeneration. This gives us a huge amount. We have 11 points allocated here, which means 11 times 5 is 55, and then we get 35% more on top of that, equaling roughly 70% increased mana regeneration rate. Brilliant. And of course, we get that on both. So our mana regeneration, so our rage regeneration is roughly 6 or 7, meaning that every time we attack, a fraction of a second passes, we immediately gain 1 rage, and we go all the way back up to 50. So that's all that's all. We have our flask effect, we have our crucible mods, and we have chain breaker to give us the rage. And we have the combination of hate forge, chains of emancipation, the rubble of promise to generate all our rage. Now, another big thing is that mana is going to be a problem. We can't generate mana. So if we start spending it, we're going to run out of it really quick and not be able to cast our skills throughout the map. So it was really important to get the mana cost of skills down to zero. This was done with inspiration. And as I said, global reduction of skill cost meaning that all of our skills that we want to spam they don't cost any mana and instead only cost rage whenever our flasks are up it only costs rage because of a 25 percent reduced mana cost of skills during effect this is applied and then of course the minus seven from our opal ring brings us down to zero with everything combined meaning we only need to spend three rage when we use a skill which is brilliant because we want to be able to spam our leap attack and our battle mage is crying or just get those big spell damage buffs on our attacks now let's talk about strength stacking and spell damage strength stacking iron will is the big one here strength damage bonus applies to spell damage as well as all your melee damage meaning that you're dealing a lot more damage due to battle mages cry now how does this work well whenever you use this this causes the increases and reductions to spell damage to also apply to attacks at 25 percent of the value per five power up to a maximum of 150%. This is where our shield comes in. Red Blade Banner, we always have infinite war power, which basically means that all of our damage that is applied to spell damage is applied to our attacks at 150% of the value. This is a huge increase to our damage, and it means that we can scale our build based on these large clusters, which I showed previously. So spell damage actually becomes a huge benefit to our attack damage due to Battle Mages Cry. And obviously, we just got this on left click. We just spam it as we go. And we don't have to worry about it. And an interesting thing about Battle Mages Cry is when you exert an attack with it, it actually triggers a socketed skill, meaning our Molten Shell is automated, which is very, very nice. Now, let's talk about our auras. And the first thing we have to do with our auras in this build is cap our resistances because we are a Pathfinder, which means that we can have a permanent Bismuth Flask and Anomalous Period of Elements. And this almost caps us immediately. A little bit more resistance from your gear will mean you're sat nicely at 75, 75, 75. Of course, when your flasks are not up, you're going to be in trouble town. But when you're in a map killing everything, these are going to be up permanently. And you can even see our Chaos Res. It's pretty nice to capped. Uh, you could obviously get Chaos Res on another piece of gear, and this would be brilliant. So that's the Elemental Resistance covered. The rest is Defensive Auras. We have Petrified Blood. We have Determination. We have Vitality for more life regen. And in the weapon, you'll see we have Clarity, Blood and Sand and precision now how the hell am i fitting all these well we actually got pretty lucky with our tree i had no intention of doing this at the time when the pob was made it wasn't intended that i was going to hit this middle mod everything else i wanted i wanted the wither effect i wanted the crit chance i wanted the strength i wanted this mod and we just happened to run into level 25 and arrogance and it turned out to be the best possible mod we could have gotten because it means we can drop a gem somewhere Put, it in the, put these in the weapon, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, this just happened to... This just came about and it ended up being perfect. Uh, as for the shield, nothing really good on here other than, of course, the mod. We have some life. Uh, a strength sacking helmet, which gives us all our uh, crit chance and nearby enemies have minus 12. Now we do have to run. Hits can't be evaded. Even with all this accuracy from precision and our helmet, we're a tiny bit off and it's just easier to run. Hits can't be evaded. It's pretty difficult to craft the weapon with six mods anyway so i just went with hits can't be evaded maybe you could work this out so you don't need to use it but it's pretty difficult to get another prefix you want anyway the weapon you spam with zeal essences until you hit the crit 
then you lock your suffixes and reforge critical with harvest to hit the multi you would then veiled chaos orb to hit the pen and then you would do suffixes cannot be changed or chaos and hope that you remove the meta mod and hit the only mod which you can hit with an org chaos which is that added flat chaos damage now if you do that and you remove the pen well then you have to then ashling and it's kind of a, a cycle back and forth until you hit the correct pair of mods and then the final thing of course is the chest the iron fortress pretty standard strength second chest gives you block gives you a lot of flat strength reduces your move speed which is whatever we're going to be leap attacking around anywhere anyway and then it increases the amount of damage our strength gives so all in all we ended up being a pretty tanky build very capable of bossing very capable of mapping it's not the map blaster that i'm used to playing but it ended up being something that it ended up being a very nice different build for me not one that i think i could play for weeks on end i'm, I'm just more of a bv winter orb ts kind of guy but if you like an all-roundy build then this is not a bad way to go obviously hate forge is quite expensive i think they're about 110 divines 140 one mirror like who knows somewhere within that ballpark right uh, but the rest of the gear isn't too difficult to put together obviously the shield is going to be annoying uh, you're going to have to find one with this mod. Alternatively, you could get yourself an El Abin's Visage with the Volcanic Fissure mod. I don't have one right now, but you could go out and purchase one and use it instead of this helmet, which is what I did before I hit the shield. Now, you do lose a lot of crit chance. You also lose the nearby enemies have minus 12, but there's not really an alternative. So we'll come into POB, and it is pretty difficult to calculate the hit DPS of this build. Based on our soul game prevention time, we can hit about 2.5 times per second we're doing eight projectiles which hit twice so that's 16 so 16 times 2.5 is 40 40 times 1.3 million let's say conservatively 50 million this is of course relying on overlaps which you do get quite easily because you can reduce the area of effect of the skill and use blood stance and all of the projectiles typically will overlap on the target and obviously this will bounce around and by the end of this you'll have a lot of projectiles you can see on the screen there i'm sure it's a bit laggy you end up getting a lot of overlaps on the targets and you will melt bosses um pretty easily but a nice little adventure into hate forge i'll leave the pob in the description with all the so you can see all the gems the jewels uh, all the gear uh, maybe you want to give it a try or maybe you want to expand on what i've done and make it even better thank you for watching i'll see you next time